Well, John, let's see, 12, I don't know, I'm trying to remember the age he was when, well, of course, he was born in the church. He was, I think, one of the first children born when we first went down there. I'm trying to remember what year he was born. We went to Morgan City in 82. So I think he was, I think Susie was pregnant with John when we actually moved to Morgan City. He would come over with Jean when she would babysit Brooke and I, and uh, we'd get in trouble. We'd mess with Jean, play little jokes on her. He would come over and watch TV with us because he didn't have TV at his house, and we'd play Nintendo. And uh, those are the first memories were mostly like that, just him coming over during the day over the summer when we were out of school. John came from uh, a very small school with only a few kids. John would, I, uh, at the time I didn't really like public school very much, I don't think. I was, I don't know, just kind of, I really liked John, mostly, and Jacob, Alan, and was, and I knew that they went to Emmanuel, and I thought I should, I would like to go there. He talked me into it, he and Jacob both, and so I asked my mom if I could go to Emmanuel, and she was into it, so I switched schools my seventh grade year. And then in ninth grade was kind of probably from his perspective maybe thrown into this world of public school and um, just a whole different world view. Uh, and at first uh, when I met him he seemed to be really quiet and by the time he graduated was probably safe to say the most popular kid in school. He was always, John was always a lot of fun on youth trips. Um, he, um, oh, I don't know. Um, you know, he, he's between his kids and uh, between him and my kids, somebody was always in trouble. His dad was, you know, Jim. Hey, hey Jim. <laughs> Being a deacon of the church, I remember a few, few bouts them boys had. <laughs> uh, a couple bouts we had at the, at the tent when we were having the big garage sale and just uh, but you look back at it all now and like I said hindsight's it's you almost want to crack up some of the things that went on and some of the things that our kids did when they were in the, in church and and on and on and on. Well I knew him from Emmanuel because my brother went there and I knew him from like school functions church functions and I was real good friends with Eric O'Quinn, so kind of knew him through that. And then the first real, like, when I started hanging out with him was in high school, our freshman year, when he came. And I was like, oh, I knew him, because not many people knew who he was. Uh, the first time I remember ever seeing John, I don't know that I even was introduced to him or knew his name, um, but he was standing against some lockers and was uh, just, it was a huge group of people, and he was just this skinny little nondescript kid, um, which is so funny now because he's anything but nondescript, um, and didn't really get to know him well till later. Um, and he seemed quiet uh, and shy, but as I found out later, was much the opposite. Well. For me, I had I, I always went to Berwick, so for me it was that's where I was going to go back. I, my friends were there, um, John Balsamo and Seth Perical and all these kids, all went to that school. So I was going to go back there. I wanted John to come with me, and I talked to him about it, and we both tested for me to get back into the gifted program and for him to get into the gifted program so that we could go to Berwick, which was because we lived in Morgan City, and. Um, wanted Jacob and Jason to come too, but they wanted to go to Morgan City, so they did. And so John and I kind of went together from Emmanuel. And it was a, a, a huge transition for him um, because he'd always been at Emmanuel in a small school. For me, it wasn't as big of a transition because I'd only been at Emmanuel for two years and I already knew a bunch of people. So for the summer, I remember the summer before, I kind of introduced him to, to my friends who were, f who were still at Berwick, like, like John Balsamo who lives in Lakeside, who lived in Lakeside at the time and Seth Perkle and Dean Duplantis and a few other kids. And, um, and then when we hit Berwick, uh, first few months, John kind of was quiet. 
and then started playing sports and became John John Melvin. <laughs> he became like Mr. Uh, Mr. Sports Celebrity at Berwick, and everyone knew him. And yeah, he took off. So, but we stayed close throughout the whole time. Even though, like he became Mr. Berwick High, really. But yeah, and still we would get together from time to time with Jason Taylor and Jacob Allen from from Emmanuel, and even though they were going to Morgan City, and we'd go and kind of do the same things we always did in junior high. And the other thing that was really surprising for me was right, because we were in such a small group always, the, the, just the, the, the way he interacted with large groups, just like a natural, even though he had never, as far as I know, been maybe at church, but really been in large group situations where you're at a pep rally or something like that and just can kind of turn, turn on the personality like that which he did and did really well, always. Oh my goodness, John and school and teachers um, usually didn't mix, <laughs> even though he was one of the smartest people I knew, um, though his teachers would probably say he was one of the most smart aleck people <laughs> that they knew. Um, he knew he was smart and it was like because of that he, he didn't need to make the grades. He wasn't about proving to the world anything. In, in Miss Gray's biology class, John and I had Miss Gray for two hours in a row and it, she was an older teacher who didn't really like kids I don't think at that time but we, would, we were getting a lot of trouble. That was the class that I for, I for one got all my trouble my freshman year in high school was in her class and John would never get in trouble in her class he would do the same things as me but do it in a much more sly way so that he would never really get caught and I would um, one particular time he um, he decided he was gonna see how many times he could walk around the classroom for two class periods and each time he would walk around the classroom he would take a tissue out of her her, uh, her little tissue thing that she had on her desk. And he walked around her class constantly for two class periods and took tissue and just, no, she never noticed. He just would duck behind file cabinets and things and she never said anything to him. She sneezed at one point and went for a tissue and there was none. And I just thought it was really, really funny that he could get away with things like that and not ever get noticed. Just a sly little guy. He gave his teachers just wreaked havoc to no end, it seems. Um, Dr. Provost, uh, especially. Uh, I was in class with him, uh, with Dr. Provost, one year, and he would just try to get her off subject all the time. And it drove her crazy, and she was so easy to get off subject. I mean, you could mention what was on Oprah yesterday, and for the rest of the class, that's what you talked about. I was in ninth grade. Uh, he was in tenth. Yeah, I think actually we met one day, and the first time we had, I, we knew each other. But I mean, we didn't know each other. You know, we didn't know. We didn't really know each other. We just knew who each other were. And we actually met in the hallway one day. We were hanging out, and I think actually we were passing things around the hallway. Like he would go stand on the other side, on the other hallway, and I would stand in one hallway and. You know, I'd give a pencil to somebody and he'd bring it around to another person and we kept passing things around just to see if people would keep uh, bringing things back to us. You never knew we, we were going to get back. You know, I, I didn't know if he was going to send me back a shoe or a dollar bill or a quarter or what. And, and that was kind of the first thing I think we did together at school.